Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are gonna be talking about six layer stack ups. Now, we got a good viewer question asking about some six layer stack up guidelines, and that's what we're gonna look at today. And one way to get started thinking about six layer stack ups is to compare them with a four layer stack up. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first, to get started, what is the structure of a six layer stack up? Well, obviously we have, we have six copper layers, but the stack up structure is a little different just in terms of where the core and the prepreg are arranged. So here we've got our top copper layer, and then normally what we have is we have our next layer. This could be a plain layer. We'll just write it as plain for now. And then what we have is we have a thicker core layer. So we've got a thin dielectric. We have a thick core. And then we have another thin prepreg layer. Another thick core so that we keep things symmetric. And then finally we have our bottom layer. Typically what we do with the six layer stack up is we'll have a top layer, we'll have a plane, and then we'll have a bottom layer, and then we'll have a plane. Okay, and we'll keep things pretty symmetric here. Now, what are you doing with these planes? What are you putting on the top layer and the bottom layer? Well, it all depends what you need to do, but you can take kind of the same approach with these outer two layers that you would with a four layer board. So if you remember some of our earlier videos on four layer stack ups, what we did was we showed kind of the typical one where you have like signal and then signal on the outer layers, and then maybe you have ground and power on these next uh, outer layers. But you could also use one of the alternative type of configurations that we actually showed in the alternative four layer stack ups video. So we'll link to that in the description. One of those alternatives was instead of having just signal here, we do signal and power. And then we do the same thing down here, signal and power. And then the next layer we just put as ground and ground. So if you remember from that other video, you get the same kind of benefits here that you have in the four layer board because we have thin dielectrics on the outer layer. We have very good decoupling between the power uh, routing on the top layer, power routing on the ground layer, and then the ground on the next layer. And we could then support, if we needed to, high speed signals on both layers. So even if you needed controlled impedance, you could actually get controlled impedance both on the outer layers. So let's just say that we went with like, you know, four mil standard dielectric out here on the top and bottom dielectric layers. You could then get your trace widths to about eight mils on these outer layers in order to hit a 50 ohm impedance target. You could support high speed with this type of stack up. So we've basically done the same kind of thing that we did with the four layer board. Alternatively, if you really wanted to, you could take these two layers and you could flip them so that you've got the ground on the outside, signal and power on the inside. So now we have a really important question. What are we doing with these next two layers? Why do we even have them? So those are fair questions. Usually people will graduate from a four layer board to a six layer board because they need another layer, at least one more layer, so that they can fit more signal into the board. So maybe the board is getting dense, you've got high IO count, whatever the reason may be, you just don't have enough room on the top and bottom layers to fit all of your signals and you need an internal layer for it. So typically what'll happen is you'll have the next one here uh, will be signal, so on L3. Now, what do you do with L4 here? Well, older guidelines will typically tell you to also put this as signal and you would basically have two adjacent signal layers. Probably a better idea here is to put power on the next layer in case you have a lot of devices here that are going to need uh, quite a bit of power. So you've got additional area where you can put power and then get those up to uh, up to both surfaces in this board. And even here with this power plane, even if you don't have you know, huge current requirements, maybe you have multiple voltage levels. So what you can do is you can put rails here 
instead of just having a uniform plane. You could put rails here on this power plane and that would allow you to hit multiple devices on both layers uh, with different voltage levels if you needed to. So why would you not want to do this and have two signal layers here? Well, typically when people bring up this, they start to bring up an orthogonal routing strategy. And what I mean by that is, if you were looking at, say, this layer from the top and then this layer from the top, you would have traces routing, let's say, vertically on this layer, so on L3, and then you might have traces routing horizontally on this layer, on L4. So this is typically done to encourage you to think about a way to basically route uh, traces on adjacent layers while preventing crosstalk between them, or at least minimizing crosstalk between them. Now, back in the days of like through hole components where you basically had everything aligned in two rows on the surface layer and you know everything was just oriented at right angles to each other, you could actually do this pretty much uh, on any board you could, you could imagine. Modern boards where you may have like, you know, may have BGAs or QFN packages and you know, the traces are essentially having to come in at every direction. This is not so practical anymore. And what you might end up doing is ending up with a situation here where you actually do have things routing parallel on these two adjacent layers. So this is where you introduce the potential for crosstalk between the traces on these two layers. So it's better to avoid doing signal and signal on these two internal layers without separating them with ground. Or at the very minimum, on this layer, let's say, you can find all the traces over here and then on the next layer, you can find all the traces over here. So you at least separate them from each other. And if you separate them from each other in different regions of the board, then it's much more difficult for them to cause any crosstalk between them. You could then fill in the leftover space with ground. Same thing over here. You could fill in this leftover space with ground or power if you needed it. If you do put signals on the internal layers, just be careful to separate them because the way that modern ICs are structured, it kind of forces you to route in different directions and could end up putting you in a situation where you do get strong crosstalk between traces on these layers and you would obviously like to avoid that. So if you were gonna use this for high speed design and you need a lot of power going to all your different components on your board, well, what should you do with these internal layers? Now, if you remember some of our discussions with power integrity, it's really desirable to put the power and ground plane pair basically here between these two layers, okay? And the reason is that when you have the thin dielectric here, you've got really high plane capacitance here between these two layers. And so it would be a good idea to try and put power here and then ground here. Now I've seen devices where, or I've seen boards where they actually don't do this and you could create a power integrity problem. And so what they'll do is they'll actually end up putting ground here and putting signal here. And then they'll put ground up here and expect to have good decoupling. You could run a, a board that needs, you know, some high speed on it, meaning it's low IO count, but eventually as that IO count gets very high and you have a device that's running with a lot of IOs running at high speed simultaneously, this may not provide enough decoupling in order to maintain stable power. So as your IO count goes up and as your speed goes up, you're gonna have to then put ground here instead. So you'll notice that there's a lot of ground on this. Well, you could then also put, let's say, power here. You could then put ground here. So the reason you might wanna put power here and power here is because typically in this situation where you now have multiple IOs all running at high speed on multiple devices simultaneously, and you need that good decoupling, you tend to also have multiple voltage levels that you're gonna need. So then adding another power layer, maybe splitting it up into rails, is a good way to get to all of those different devices that need different power levels, while also ensuring that you have good decoupling. So this could be your either highest current or lowest voltage power uh, power plane and the reason I bring up lowest voltage is because if you have really good decoupling here to try and get stable power you would like to ensure that this rail is going to have the lowest fluctuation possible so 
You want the lowest fluctuation to correspond to obviously the lowest voltage because that's going to be the one that's most sensitive to getting a glitch and causing the device to fail. You could then maybe put your let's say 5 volts or 3v3 or you know 2v5 whatever other rails on this other layer and then decouple them with ground on the surface layer. Hopefully this kind of reveals some of the strategies for thinking about how to use a six layer board for high speed design. Notice here that maybe we might have a lot of high speed running all at once, but we didn't actually just pack in a bunch of signal on these internal layers. So a lot of high speed running at once doesn't necessarily mean that we have thousands of traces that we have to pack into these two internal signal layers. Instead, we're actually gonna get a lot more stability if we try and pair up our power and ground plane so that we can get high plane capacitance and that ensures stable power is getting to all of our different components. Thanks for watching this. If you have any other questions about six layer boards, please send them on over. Also, we're gonna look a little more in the future at EMI problems that can arise in six layer boards because these boards can be a little challenging, especially once you start trying to put signal into these inner two layers. All right, thanks everybody. And before you start playing around with the six layer stack up, don't forget to call your fabricator.